Welcome back to our machine learning project series. In this episode, we are going to dive into the exciting world of digital recognition using the MNIST dataset. If you are new to machine learning or looking to expand your skills, you are in the right place. Today, we will walk you through the process of building a model that can accurately recognize handwritten digits. So let's get started and embark on this fascinating journey into the realm of machine learning and computer vision. Grab your favorite beverage, sit back, and let's dive into the world of MNIST digit recognition. Before we begin coding, let's import the necessary libraries and packages that will help us build our MNIST digit recognition project. We will be working with some powerful tools, so make sure you have them. Here are the important things that we will be using. Let's break down what each of these imports does. Torch is a popular machine learning library that provides efficient tensor operation for building and training neural networks. Torch Vision is a module in PyTorch that provides utilities for working with computer vision datasets including the MNIST dataset. Torch.nn contains functions and classes for defining and training neural networks. We will be using it to build our modern model. TQDM is a library that provides a progress bar to track the progress of our training loops. Torch.optim is a module that provides optimization algorithm for updating the parameter of our model during training. Matplotlib is a plotting library that we will use to visualize our data and model performance. TorchVision contains functions for transforming our data, such as resizing, normalizing, and augmenting images. With these powerful tools, we are ready to dive into the code and start building our MNIST digit recognition project. Let's move on the next step. Now that we have our necessary imports, let's move on to the loading of the MNIST dataset. The dataset consists of large number of handwritten digits, each labeled with the corresponding digit. We will use the dataset to train and test our model. Here is how we can load the dataset. Let's break down what each of these lines does. We start by defining the train set variable. We specify the root directory where the dataset will be stored. Uh, that is in our case dot slash data. The train parameter is set to true to indicate that we want the training portion of the dataset. The download parameter is set to true to automatically download the dataset if it's not already available. Lastly, we will apply the transform function to pre-process the data. Next, we create a train loader by wrapping the train set in our data loader. The data loader provides an efficient way to load the data in batches during training. We set the batch size to 64, which means we will process 64 images at a time. The shuffle parameter is set to true, which randomizes the order of the data to improve the training asset. We then create a test loader with the same batch size and other parameters. By loading the MNIST dataset into our train and test loader, we are ready to move on to the next step, where we will build and train our model. Now that we have loaded our MNIST dataset, let's take a moment to visualize a sample of the data. This will give us a better understanding of the images we will be working with. We can use the following code to display some example images from the dataset. By running this code, we will be able to see a grid of sample images from the MNIST dataset along with their true labels. With the dataset visualized, we can proceed to the next step where we will build and train our model. Now it's time to define our convolutional neural network model. This model will serve as the backbone for our digit recognition system. In this code, we define a class called CNN, which is a subclass of NN.module. This allows us to leverage the capabilities of PyTorch for building neural networks. Within the init method, we use the NN.sequential module to create a sequential flow of operations. In the convolutional layers, we have two set of nn.pawn 2D followed by nn.relu and nn.maxpool 2D layers. These layers perform convolution, apply the rectified linear unit 
and perform max pooling to extract and down sample features from the input images. In the fully connected layers, we have NN dot flattened to reshape the output of the convolution layers into a vector. This is followed by two NN dot linear layers for classification. The first linear layer takes the flattened features as input and produces a hidden representation. The final layer maps this hidden representation to the output classes, which is in our case is 10 digits from 0 to 9. Forward method defines forward pass of our model. It passes the input x through the convolution layer that is self.con to extract relevant feature from the images. Then the output is passed through the fully connected layers that is self.fc to obtain the final logits for each class. With the over updated CNN model defined, we are now ready to move forward and proceed with the training process. Now that we have our CNN model defined, let's move on to initializing the model, MOS function and optimizer. We will also check if a CUDA enabled GPU is available for accelerated training. Here is the script for these steps. In the first line, we check if a CUDA enabled GPU is available using torch.cuda is available method. If it is, we set the device to CUDA, indicating that we will be using the GPU for training. Otherwise, we set it to CPU for CPU based training. Next, we initialize our CNN model and move it to the chosen device using two device method. This ensures that the model's operation and parameter will be allocated on the appropriate device. We also define the loss function as nn.crossentropy loss. This is a commonly used loss function for multi class classification problems like ours. Finally, we set the optimizer using stochastic gradient descent with a learning rate of 0.001 and momentum of 0.9. With the model, loss function and optimizer ready, we can proceed to the next step where we will train our model on the MNIST dataset. Now it's time to train our CNN model on the MNIST dataset. We will iterate over multiple epochs and update the model's parameter using the optimization algorithm. Here is high level explanation of the training process. We start by looping over the specified number of epochs, which in this case is set to 5. An epoch represents a complete pass through the entire training dataset. Within each epoch, we initialize the running loss variable to 0, which will keep track of the accumulated loss for each batch. We then iterate over the train loader using enumerate to get both the batch index that is IDX and the data that is our input and labels. We move the data to the chosen device using dot to device method, ensuring that the data is compatible with the device GPU or CPU we selected earlier. Next, we zero out the gradient of the auto optimizer using optimizer.0 grad. This is necessary before computing the gradients for the current batch. We pass the input through the model to obtain the predicted outputs. Using the predicted outputs and the corresponding labels, we calculate the loss using the specified loss function criterion. We Sort backward to compute the gradients of the model's parameter with respect to the loss. Then we use optimizer dot step to update the model's parameter based on the computed gradients and the optimization algorithm. We accumulate the loss value for the current batch to the running loss variable. After iterating over all the batches in the training data, we calculate and print the average loss per 100 batches for the current epoch. Finally, outside the epoch loop, we print a message indicating that the training has finished. By running this training code, our CNN model will learn to recognize digits from the MNIST dataset.
After training our scene and model, it's essential to evaluate its performance on the test data to measure how well it can generalize to unseen examples. We initialize the correct and total variables to keep track of the correct prediction and the total number of examples respectively. Using torch.nograd, we disable graded calculations during evaluation to save memory and computational resources. We iterate over the patches in the test loader, obtaining images and their corresponding labels. We move images and labels to the chosen device using dot to device method. We pass the images through the train model net to obtain the predicted outputs. Using torch.max, we extract the predicted labels by finding the index of the maximum value along the second dimension of the input tensor. We calculate the number of correct prediction by comparing the predicted labels with the true labels. Thus, dot sum dot item converts the number of correct prediction into a scalar value. After iterating over all the test patches, we calculate the accuracy by dividing the number of correct prediction by the total number of examples and multiplying by 100. Finally, we print the accuracy on the test dataset, providing the percentage of correctly classified examples. And there you have it. We have successfully built and trained a convolutional neural network for digit recognition using the MNIST dataset.